Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense, and today I'm going over with you guys five classically masculine fragrances. Most of these are from the 80s, so we're gonna be dealing with a lot of that style of masculine fragrance in this video. And I do have planned a modern masculine fragrance video coming up here in the next few days. That video is gonna be more fragrances that are considered masculine now, but if they were released when these fragrances we're gonna talk about today were released, probably wouldn't seem so masculine. Not that there's anything wrong with modern masculine fragrances, I like a whole lot of those, but in this video, we're talking about those fragrances they're gonna put some hair on your chest. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this and check out some classically masculine fragrances. Now, of course, we could have gone even further back than mainly the 80s. We could have gone back to fragrances like Dior Eau Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, and that's a great fragrance. That one's held up very well across decades and decades and decades. But in this video, I wanted to talk about more those fragrances that you might think of when you think an old macho kind of scent. First fragrance I wanna talk about here is one that I absolutely love, and I do still wear this fragrance from time to time. I think it's stood up very well since it was released. And it's this one right here, Dior Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette. This was originally released in 1988. It's got violet, nutmeg, vetiver, cedar, leather, and what this is most well known for, or what most people will talk about when they talk about Dior Fahrenheit, is the gasoline or petrol kind of smell that it has in the opening of the fragrance. So when you first spray this on, get a big whiff of it, might remind you a little bit of gasoline. And of course, what is more masculine or macho than smelling like you've dumped gasoline on yourself? So yeah, Fahrenheit has a green sort of petrol accord initially. A lot of that's gonna be from the violet in this fragrance. As it dries down, you've got other florals that come into the scent. You've got spices, of course, leather in the dry down, which is probably the second thing that Dior Fahrenheit is known for, that petrol kind of accord, kind of smell, and then the leather as it dries down. You also have woody notes in here, like vetiver and cedar as well, and to me, your Fahrenheit is an absolute classic when you're talking about truly masculine scents. Now, women do wear Dior Fahrenheit. They've been known to wear Dior Fahrenheit, um, but to me, it's very masculine. One other thing about Dior Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette, it was reformulated, has been reformulated numerous times, and in the mid 2010s for a little while, it was more vanilla-ish instead of having a big petrol vibe, gasoline vibe off the top, it actually smelled like there was a lot of vanilla that had been thrown in here. It was reformed again uh, right around 2016, I believe, and it kind of changed back closer to what it was originally. So heavier on that petrol, the violet, the gasoline, the leather, all that stuff. So if you buy a bottle of Dior Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette now, and it's been made in the past four years, should be a bit closer to how it was originally. It is a fantastic release. It has spawned lots of different flankers, some of them more successful than others, but the original Dior Fahrenheit classic masculine scent, awesome. For the next two fragrances, we're double dipping into 1981. Each one of these scents was released in 81. So these fragrances are a good deal older than I am. First one I'm gonna talk about is this one right here. Yves Saint Laurent, Koros. Nice. Leather, musk, oak moss, civet, and honey. Some of the notes in this fragrance. There are also a lot of aldehydes off the top of this scent. So when you first spray this one on, you're gonna get a big blast of aldehydic notes right to the nose. I frankly love Koros. I love the way this smells, but out of everything here, this one is the most divisive scent. This is the one that's gonna have the most people turn their nose up and go like, no, that is not wearable. That is not for me. And a lot of people will actually say that Koros reminds them of uh, urine or piss. <laughs> that's how most people will say Koros smells, that it has kind of a pissy scent to it but I don't really necessarily pick that up from Koros. Do I get musk? Yeah, yeah, I do. Do I get civet? Yeah. And a malic? Yeah, yeah, it is that. And like I said, lots of aldehydes as well. And the performance is 
very strong. So you don't want to wear Koros on a really hot day. You don't want to spray this on really heavily unless you hate literally everybody you're going to come into contact with and possibly even hate yourself because if you spray this on really heavily, it's going to overwhelm the olfactive sense. And the honey here does provide this interesting kind of sweetness, this interesting contrast to the more animalic notes, especially that civet and the musk, the way that it comes across here in Koros. A lot of people search out uh, vintage bottles of this fragrance. If you go on to eBay, there's usually at least four or five different uh, auctions going around at any given time for vintage bottles of Koros. And there's actually a big write-up on Raiders of the Lost Scent. So if you Google Raiders of the Lost Scent Koros, there's a write-up about the different formulations, the different bottle styles in this fragrance, let you know a little bit about the differences as this fragrance has evolved from when it was first released. If you're younger and you like all the modern blue fragrances and that's basically all you wear, you know, if you rotate between Sauvage and Y and Dylan Blue and stuff like that, which there's nothing wrong with that, but if you rotate between those kind of fragrances and that's how you roll, that one is not going to be for you, my friend. And of all these fragrances, this is the one that's least safe in terms of a blind buy, in my opinion. All that said, though, still love it. And the next fragrance from 1981, which is to me an equally important hypermasculine fragrance, is this one, Antaeus by Chanel. Whereas Koros had civet, Antaeus has castorium. It also has oak moss, patchouli, labdanum, rose, a bunch of other notes in here. This one does have animalic facets just like Koros, but to me, Antaeus is an easier fragrance overall to wear and a more approachable fragrance than Koros is. Antaeus opens up with myrrh, coriander, clary sage, and citrus. So initially, when you very first spray this on, you might smell it and go like, well, it's not too animalic, not too dirty. I don't get what people are talking about. But as it dries down, the castorium comes out more and more and more and more and more. And with that castorium, the oak moss, and the floral notes in here, it's a fragrance that's both clean and dirty. It is both animalic and classy at the same time. So a lot of different things going on with Antaeus. Castorium is going to give you this sort of leathery vibe to it, and that's where a lot of that kind of dirty vibe that you may get from Antaeus comes from. Uh, you've also got Okamas in here, florals, woods, classically masculine through and through, and another fragrance with fantastic performance off my skin. Antaeus and Koros both great, great performers, not fragrances, again, that you want to go too heavy with. And like Koros before it, and actually pretty much all the fragrances in this list, there is a big premium placed on vintage bottles of Antaeus. If you can pick up a vintage bottle of this fragrance for a decent price, absolutely do it. But understand that most of the time when vintage bottles for this pop up, they go for a big premium. And it's not like Chanel is an inexpensive designer brand to begin with. So I've seen uh, vintage bottles of this fragrance go for you know, $200, $250 not cheap stuff. Fantastic scent though, and it still sells, people still wear it. Antaeus from 1981. Next up, a classic. Next up is the only fragrance in this video that's not from the 80s. This one is from the 70s, from 1978 to be exact, and it is this guy right here, Ralph Lauren Polo, Polo Green. This is another fragrance that has been reformulated. I'm not gonna go into too much detail there. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, you can Google Ralph Lauren Polo or Polo Green reformulation and read all about people freaking out about that. Uh, there was this released, Polo Modern Reserve, and a lot of people said that Modern Reserve was closer to the original, you know, late 70s, early 80s Polo Green, but Modern Reserve is discontinued and now commands a bit of a premium itself. But ultimately, in this video, we're talking about this one, the original Polo Green. Tobacco, leather, oak moss, patchouli, woods, and pine are some of the notes in this fragrance. When you first spray it on, it's green, it's fresh, it's grassy. As it dries down, you do have some heavier notes that come out, like the tobacco, along with the oak moss and the leather in here. This one comes across uh, a bit soapy at times, so it's got like some soapy cleanliness in there. 
And at other times, polo green comes across a little bit earthy, a little bit dirtier, a little more depth. It is though a fantastic green woody fragrance, very classically masculine like all these fragrances are. And this one I feel like more so than any of the other ones is the one that if you're younger, uh, possibly your father's wore or even your grandfather's depending on how young you are. This one was everywhere. I remember smelling this on so many different people in my family growing up, uh, my dad wore this fragrance as well. And when I think about Ralph Lauren, this is the first fragrance that pops into my mind, which makes sense because this is the first men's fragrance that Ralph Lauren ever did. They did uh, Chaps, which came out, I believe, one year after this fragrance. And a lot of people still love that fragrance and talk about it. But Ralph Lauren Polo Green, to me, is one of the quintessential classically masculine fragrances out there. And you will notice across these fragrances a lot of overlap in notes. Leather, oak moss, patchouli, uh, woody notes. A lot of fragrances used those notes. Uh, lavender as well was a big one. So you would see that in a lot of those classic masculine scents from the 80s. Those notes being used in different ways to differing degrees, but they were in lots and lots and lots of men's fragrances back then. Almost like nowadays, you'll see Ambroxan or Amberwood used across many, many different fragrances. Before I talk about this last fragrance in this list, I do need to mention some other classically masculine scents that I thought about featuring here, but I just didn't want the video to run too long. So this is kind of a quick shout out, I guess, to those fragrances. Uh, first off, Van Cleef & Arpels Pour Homme. Van Cleef & Arpels most recently, or over the past few years, I guess I'll say, Van Cleef & Arpels most well known for Midnight in Paris, but Van Cleef & Arpels Pour Homme, classic scent. Azaro Pour Homme, which is a great barbershop fragrance, uh, especially on the cheap nowadays, because you can pick that up from discounters for very, very little. And kind of following up with that, the barbershop vibe, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Paco Rabanne, nowadays more well-known for Invictus, one million fragrances along those lines, but Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, classic scent. Quorum, which I'm actually going to be doing a review on pretty soon, but just wanted to bring that one up and be on the lookout for that. That will be my next 80s review. It's been a long time, but Quorum, pretty soon, gonna review that. Uh, Salvador Dali Pour Homme, which is fantastic and was very, very inexpensive for a long time at discounters. Sadly now, harder to find. Price is going up, 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 up. But Salvador Dali Pour Homme, great. And lastly, Versace Loam. Yeah, so Versace, more well-known, of course, nowadays for things like Dylan Blue, but Versace Loam is a great classic masculine scent. And the last one I wanna talk about here of the five, I guess, officially in this video, is my absolute favorite. You may know what it is already. Dracar Noir. Came out in 1982. And this is actually my scent of the day. So let's go ahead and refresh. Lavender, oak moss, leather, pine, fir, sandalwood, some of the notes in this fragrance of which there are many, which is something you saw all the time in older fragrances. Just a huge note breakdown. It opens up citrusy and clean. It's got lavender, it's got herbs. It really pops off your skin initially. This one is a quintessential 80s aromatic fougere. Soapy, woody, green, and uh, masculine. Yeah, Dracar Noir has been one of my favorite fragrances since I was a kid. Uh, I've told the story many times, but my mom bought this for me, not this specific bottle, but this fragrance, back when I was in elementary school. Yeah, so I've been wearing Dracar Noir off and on since uh, like third grade. There's a little bit of sweetness in here, but not too much. As it dries down, you get leather and oak moss, like I talked about before. That's a classic combo in 80s fragrances, and uh, to me, this is the king of the 80s fragrances. It's almost a meme, right? Like you hear Dracar Noir and you just think of that douchey guy who's sprayed himself down with 25 sprays of Dracar Noir and you can pick him up from like 100 yards away. But if you wear it in moderation, it's still a nice fragrance. I still like the way that one smells. And as I said, it's my sin of the day, Dracar Noir. Wrapping up this video of classic 
masculine fragrances. Like I said, guys, I'll do a modern version of this in the next few days, and the fragrances are gonna be decidedly different than these five here that I talked about today. And maybe in the future, I'll cover some of those other fragrances that I mentioned but didn't directly cover in this one. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments below which of these fragrances is your favorite. Of course, we all know it's Dracar Noir, but not every fragrance can be as good as this one. <laughs> and this is also super, super cheap too. It's the cheapest one on this list, not close. As always, thanks for all your support guys and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there.